We developed the GME Boot Camp because one of the things we noticed was that our incoming interns often hadn't actually seen a patient in several months in their medical school career. And before they dive right into actually seeing patients, we wanted them to get interactions with standardized patients in high fidelity simulated settings so that they could actually have time to practice critical skills like obtaining informed consent or delivering bad news to a patient. And so as opposed to a talking head in a lecture hall, what we thought was we would build a simulated patient room with a mannequin and you would have to go in and pick out the horrors we call the things that are not correct about that room. So the first thing that you can see when you see our patient here whose name is Michael Washington is that his bed rail is down on the left side of the bed which presents a fall risk. If the patient were to get up suddenly he could fall out of the bed. The bed is also at a pretty um, high height and so that's a risk for fall. The second uh, safety threat that we have to the patient is that you can see here on his arm he has a band that says what his name is and also his allergies. You see here the patient is allergic to penicillin, which is antibiotic, and latex. And at the bedside here are a bunch of latex gloves. So if a provider were to come into the room and put those gloves on, they would pose a risk to the patient. Also, you notice here the patient has a lot of different medications and blood products that are hanging on the IV pole. And you see here that some of these are not the patient's name, right? So we've got a bag here for Robert Williams. Our patient's name is Michael Washington, so that is another hazard. Wrong name, wrong patient, or a medication error. One of the last things that we should mention too is that, like Vinny just said, the patient suspected to have C. diff, and that is an infection that you can actually get if you touch a patient and you're not properly gowned and gloved. And so some of the horrors actually start outside the room when the intern is supposed to recognize that there isn't any available PPE or personal protective equipment. Also, there is no alcohol-based hand rub or soap at the sink for them to wash their hands, so we want them to pick up on the fact that hand hygiene actually is a threat here in this scenario, as well as the absence of that protective equipment. One of the things that's most interesting is what do our interns actually pick out and what do they miss? And so I think one of the things they do pick out very easily is the wrong name as well as the allergies. I think they're kind of cued into thinking about medication safety as well as seeing the allergies. And I, they definitely miss a lot of the overuse ones. So compared to the safety ones, I think the overuse ones are a little bit more subtle, so they don't get those correct. They definitely recognize the patient experience factors that we have not intentionally placed in the room. So oftentimes the students and residents will comment that the patient doesn't have access to the nursing call light so that they can't reach their nurse or that the board in the room doesn't identify the date uh, and their team. Sometimes the shades aren't drawn. And so they, they really do focus on the patient experience aspect of the experience, even though it's completely unintentional on our part. And this actually leads to building what we call situation awareness. So when you walk into a patient's room, you're able to pick out what's not right and you're able to act upon it. So one of the things that we're hoping our interns do is think about these things and apply these concepts on the floor so that when they actually walk in and if they see a fully catheter, they will recognize that it's not indicated. Um, and some of the more egregious events they see, like a medication error, they would file an event report.